channel guys real quick I want to talk about a particular question one of my subscriber asked me uh, as far as a starter go uh, how to replace the starter I can't remember what the exact question was but uh, this is a Wrangler okay big body Wrangler four-wheel drive Wrangler on top of that now as far as starters goes they pretty well, I don't want to say standard but they go in a they all pretty much go in the same spot that will allow some form of mechanism to turn or rotate that flywheel or either flex plate some people call it either or in order to allow starting as you know starter job is to turn rotate the flywheel or flex plate in hopes of starting <laughs> that's what we all hope when we uh, start our car in the morning we hope it start now as far as replacing it go it's going to be somewhere on air just about every car in between the transmission and the engine the bell housing area somewhere in there because that's where most flywheels or flex plates are located at okay now if it's a stick shelf it might be located it's still gonna be in the same general area around the bell housing area okay this particular starter like I say is on this side and because it's a nag uh, they had to move it up a little higher in a, in in actuality you have to remove the starter in order to even remove the torque converter bolt so now as far as replacing it I, I won't say most starters have two bolts but most starters have two bolts two or three I've seen some with three in this particular case here's one and here's one they have to be removed but first first things first before you do anything electrical or anything kind of repairs like that you must disconnect the battery okay so I hope you got the battery disconnected now uh there's gonna be a wire uh, coming from hopefully coming from a starter relay so to speak a uh, typical iso relay which will actually switch circuitry over to as you turn your car with the ignition switch that signal is going to go to a relay uh possibly pin uh what is it 85 maybe or 86 and a uh, ground possibly coming on pin 85 of this typical ISO relay normally it comes from the PCM and you will not get that ground signal if you're not in park or neutral or your security alarm is not activated there's a lot of things that uh, can snatch that ground away I don't want to get into that on this video but this yellow wire right here that's likely coming from the starter relay so yes, you will have to remove it. Be careful with the connectors. It's really, it can it can be funny sometimes. Now another wire or heavy gauge wire comes directly from the battery. Okay, that's where your 12 volts come. It's bolted normally on typically on a starter solenoid. Okay, uh, pretty much most starters these days gonna come with the solenoid built already on them. Uh, I don't know, a lot of guys, uh, older cats can remember the days when the starters, you can get the solenoid separately. Now if you buy a starter, you will get the solenoid with it. So you're going to have a large gauge wire, probably, it's gonna probably going to be red in color. Uh, and that's this wire right here. It's going to be bolted on probably, in this case, a 13 millimeter. So you will need a wrench uh, to get this off, to break it loose and uh simply unscrew it uh, from there because keep in mind guys uh, we limited space is limited on these newer newer cars so all right now we got the that's it right there okay it's, it's a heavy gauge wire and it goes directly sometimes straight to the battery okay and it's a solenoid wire okay we got those disconnected now the mounting screws okay like I say, on this particular car, it's gonna be this one and this one. Now, I want to go over some with you. I, you don't, you might not. If it's four-wheel drive, you may have to remove this. You may not. Depends on how much room you want to work in. All right, I had it off already. I was doing something else, so I figured I can show you guys now. Now it's better time than any to show you how to remove the starter. All right. So grab you a 15 millimeter socket and a ratchet, preferably an air ratchet, so you can deal with speed and accuracy and get those off. Let's do the top one first. All right, let's get these out. And that starter, ladies and gentlemen, should 
come right out okay if it's not they the manufacturer left or the engineers left us just enough space to fish this starter out past this mount let's see if that's the case Ah, come on baby yes and that is the case all right guys so here's your starter like I say uh, comes equipped with a um, solenoid built already on it now some screws on here I don't even know if you can buy just a solenoid <laughs> I highly recommend you don't just replace the solenoid. Even if that's possible, don't do it. Get the complete starter, okay? It's probably the only way they sell it anyway. And uh, you don't want to void your warranty. Okay, now in this particular model, this is a Chrysler OEM. Now this starter is not bad. I'm not, um, I'm just going through the motion on how to replace it if you happen to need to replace yours. And again, it will vary from car to car. This is a Jeep Wrangler, but on a minivan, on a caravan, on a car, on a truck, they're all in the same general location. Okay, now I've seen uh, these apertures, uh, the starter, uh, if you get a starter, you turn the key, and boom, this may be damage which, which will require you to replace the complete starter, because I don't know anybody that sell repair kits for the starter. Okay, uh, times when you turn the key and you just get a click, click, click uh, that could be an internal uh, starter shorted you know I've even seen these uh, trick mechanics into thinking that their engine was seized okay yes this aperture this plunged out and latched and locked into the flywheel so the engine would not turn over even if you go with a breaker bar and try to turn the crankshaft boat uh, it will not it's jammed up okay the only way, uh, I've, I've seen this personally, the only way the guy finally figured out it was a starter, he was in the process of replacing the engine. And quite frankly, the starter has to come out to replace the engine. That's when he realized he had a hard time getting this out. <clears throat> and when he got it out, his engine was free. <laughs> that situation got ugly, guys. They have to get that guy's money back for his engine. But um, I just wanted to go through the motion, guys, on how to replace the starter, okay? So, uh... The installation is pretty much the removal, reverse the removal process, and you're good to go, guys. All right, just take a look, good visual of anything, make sure you don't see anything out of the ordinary. And that's it, guys. That's all I have, man. Thanks for watching, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all on the next video.